In this video, we're going to take a look at summations and sigma notation. So we've learned quite a bit about sequences. We've learned how to find the values in a sequence, and we've practiced how to write a sequence as a closed form expression. Now we want to talk about if we have to find the sum of the terms of the sequence. So when we're looking for the sum of the terms in a sequence, we need to use sigma notation. Sigma notation, that's this guy right here is sigma. And every time you see sigma, that's just telling us well, that we're finding the sum of the terms. Now it's important to understand all of the parts of this and notice I have this written three times because you might see it written in any of these three ways. This guy right here, if you'll notice, is the same for all three expressions and it just says a sub i and i is just the index. So here, if I'm looking at a sub n, a sub m plus one, all the way up to a sub n, then this i is just going to tell me which value it is that I'm adding. And of course the summation means I'm going to add all of them. And then we have to look at our limits of the sum and that's these guys right here. So this says i starts at m, so this is the lower limit of my sum, and then goes all the way to n, which is the upper limit of my sum. Now, the way that I have it written in all three ways means the exact same thing. So here, notice you'll have one below and above. Here, you'll have the same i equals m, that's the lower limit up to n, but instead of above and below, it's sort of to the right of. And the last way is written all below. So m is less than or equal to i is less than or equal to n. All of those say we're going to start at m and we're going to continue to increase by one all the way up until we get to n. So again, any of these things say the same thing and that says we're going to take a sub i where i starts at m and then continues to increase by one, m plus one, m plus two, all the way up until we get to whatever our upper value is, our upper limit, and that's going to be the last one. Now keep in mind we're looking for a sum. So this is saying I'm going to add all of these together and then in the end I'll have some value that is the sum. So let's do a quick practice for how to write something using sigma notation. I want to use sigma notation to express the sum of the first 100 terms of the sequence a sub i, where a sub i is found by taking 1 divided by i for obviously starting with i at 1, 2, 3, etc. So before we use sigma notation, let's just take a look at what this sequence looks like. a sub 1 would be 1 over 1. a sub 2 would be 1 over 2. a sub 3 would be 1 over 3. So this sequence, if I were just writing the sequence, is 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, all the way up to 1 over 100. Now we're trying to find the sum of those first terms. So that would just be 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 all the way up to 1 over 100 but I want to do that in sigma notation. So I want to take this and instead write it as sigma notation. Sigma notation, of course, we would use sigma. And then below we would say i is equal to one because that's the starting point and goes all the way up to our upper limit of 100. So we're starting at one and going to 100. And how are we defining those terms? One over i. So the important thing here is that the i here matches the i here because that's what the i here is telling me to do is start at one and then continue to 100. So did I do this correctly? Well, let's take a look. This says start at one over one and then continue to increase that value all the way until you get to 100. So do these two things match? Yes, they do. So this is the proper solution for sigma notation. Two more fairly straightforward questions for us to go through together just to make sure we're clear on what sigma notation is all about. 
So the first one says, what is the value of the summation from five to nine of I squared? So all I'm going to do to find this summation from five to nine of I squared is start at five, increase by one, increase by one, increase by one, and stop when I get to nine. So of course that would be 25 plus 36 plus 49 plus 64 plus 81, and then I'm going to add those together to get 255. So when we're asked to find the value, all we're doing is finding the sum by hand, essentially. Same thing for the second question. This says the summation as i goes from 7 to 10 of negative 1 to the i. So now i is the exponent. So I have negative 1 to the 7th because that's my starting point. And then I'm increasing by 1, negative 1 to the 8th. Increasing by 1, negative 1 to the 9th. Increasing by 1, negative 1 to the 10th. And I stop at 10 because that's my upper limit. Negative 1 to the 7th is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 8th, positive 1. Negative 1 to the 9th, negative 1. Negative 1 to the 10th, positive 1. I add those together and I get 0. Now that we're familiar with sigma notation, let's take a look at some properties and formulas that you're going to use with summations.